Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you've been keeping up with my videos, then you're aware that my current partial hand design centers around using additive manufacturing to build the fingers. Theoretically, this should make replication of the design possible by anybody looking to build a mechanical, body-powered, partial hand device for themselves. Thing is, plastic's fantastic, but steel is real. Because the mechanical disadvantage to make the finger close 270 degrees, using only 54 degrees of wrist flexion, building the proximal links and metacarpal bases on a consumer grade printer just isn't going to yield durable, long-term, real-world solutions. Basically, it's going to just snap. For this to be viable as a daily driver, the metacarpal bases to the medials need to be printed from something much more resilient than what's going to be coming out of your 3D printer at home. One of the many perks of having a channel here on YouTube is you get a lot of emails from companies offering you samples of their products in exchange for a spot in your video. I don't say yes to a lot of these, but every so often you get an offer that's right in line with what you're doing. About a month ago, a representative from JLC PCB reached out to me about their 3D printing service. Recently, they've expanded their capabilities to include printing in 316L stainless steel. And in the next week or so, I should be receiving a full set of fingers printed from them. If everything works out and the required post-processing isn't too intensive, I'll be recommending this service to anyone looking to replicate the work I've done on this hand. If you yourself have a part that needs to be made out of something more substantial, give them a try. First time users can get a coupon to offset some or all of the cost of their first print. Getting started is pretty simple. Just upload your STL file to their website and select the material and quantity of parts that you need. Their site has an online quoting system so you can compare printing in different materials. After you've decided on your material and your quantity, your files are reviewed by someone. If everything's good, they'll send you a confirmation and an invoice. If there looks like there might be an issue with your part, they'll kick it back with a note describing the possible points of failure. At that time, you can choose to either run the part like it is or modify it as per their suggestion. Some things to keep in mind when printing in metal are minimum wall thicknesses, minimum hole diameters, and surface fit and finish. When printing in metal, you have to have a minimum wall thickness of one and a half millimeters. Same thing for holes. Anything less than a millimeter or a half will get your part file kicked back to you. Also, for parts that have a tight fit and surface finish requirements, plan on doing some post-processing. What that really looks like, I'm not sure at the moment, but I'll let you know in a future video. Another thing I found is minimum part cost per volume. I tried getting around this by nesting a couple of the smaller parts into one piece using runners. Unfortunately, all my nested part files got kicked back. Something about warping and how they put the entire batch together for processing. Just keep that in mind when you're setting up your parts for printing. If this process works out, it'll be exciting to be able to offer this as a DIY kit for anyone looking to put together their own device. That's all I have for this video. Once the parts get here, I'll do an unboxing and show you what they look like. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Each option is customizable and adjustable, plus a flashlight is included. Such a good kitty. Such a good kitty. The red and black weapon would be a perfect match for the protagonist's costume.